We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. So now uh, let us start. Uh, it is uh, my pleasure uh, to welcome you all on behalf of uh, ESQA and the Arab IJF community to this open forum on digital cooperation in the Arab region. Uh, this uh, uh, open forum is uh, designed under the title of digital cooperation in the Arab region. And in fact, it is much more than uh, digital cooperation. It is related to uh, internet governance, relationship with uh, the uh, digital cooperation uh, modality and uh, new concept launched by the Secretary General a few uh, years ago, as well as uh, uh, it relates to digital development at large. So now uh, we would like to set the scene uh, and define the program of uh, that session and, and the format. This session will be divided into two segments. The first segment I will moderate, and uh, at the end of that segment, which is 30 minutes, we will uh, get uh, some questions from the floor in Poland or from the chat box uh, virtually. Then I will give the floor to my colleague, Ms. Mirna Barbar, who is going to be the co-moderator for the second segment. She will also take some questions from the panelists, and then she will also take questions from the floor. So without further ado, let me give some few introductory uh, remarks. First of all, we are very happy and glad that our colleagues in the IGF Secretariat uh, at the global level, uh, our colleagues with Shengitai, Anya, uh, working on the Secretariat uh, for a few years, uh, for many years actually, they managed to uh, put together this very complicated hybrid model which appears to be very successful, as I see. It served the purpose. It could manage really to bring people who want to uh, fly uh, to Poland on board and people who could not fly also on board. That is really an innovative model and we commend the Secretariat and uh, of course our USG uh, on uh, digital, uh, on uh, the Department of Economic and Social Affairs for that real effort to serve the global IGF community. This is the first message. The second message I'd like really to thank uh, all the colleagues in the Arab IGF community and colleagues in ESQA and the Arab IGF Secretariat, the Arab Multi-Stakeholder Program Advisory Committee for uh, putting together this pre-event uh, to uh, our upcoming Arab IGF next week uh, that is going to take place in collaboration and in conjunction with the Arab WISCs. So in fact, today we have two kind of uh, identities, if we may. We are uh, in a way doing an activity related to the global IGF. At the same time, we are doing uh, the same activity as part of the Arab IGF. And that is the beauty of the digital world we are living in nowadays. And that is also the beauty of how uh, did such a challenging pandemic last year bring new realities to our lives where we are actually now uh, reincarnating ourselves and our avatars in reality, augmenting our reality in different settings, different locations, different points in time. For the first time in the uh, lifetime of the planet, these kind of complex uh, human interactions are taking place. Uh, that is really uh, also intriguing, and some of the intriguing questions we are going to get today from the panel, and also from next week in our intended meeting that we will talk about next uh, segment or at the end of the, the panel. So uh, today we have that discussion about digital cooperation in the Arab region, and I'm glad and proud that the Arab region has been instrumental in providing consultations to the digital cooperation. Uh, global movement since its inception in 2019 
and its maturity in 2020 in the roadmap of the Secretary General. This group has been instrumental uh, in, uh, during the COVID. During, I remember April, May 2020, we have also came together and sent our views on the IGF plus. And then we did three consultations in the Arab region on the way uh, and the road towards IGF plus, as well as the road towards Arab IGF plus. From these questions, I'd like to introduce uh, the first panelists today who have played a big role in the consultations on the road towards digital cooperation that, as I said, started in 2019. And by the way, it was the last time we met physically in IGF Berlin. And then, as I said, in April 2020, then again in August 2020, then again in December 2020, and last not least in April 2021. So let me introduce Mr. Charles Chabin, who is the executive director of a very important organization in the Arab region working on intellectual property, uh, Abu Ghazala, intellectual property uh, uh, from the very uh, respectable uh, business sector players in the region. He's that executive director. And not only that, he's a long seasoned expert in the global IGF community, being one among the Arab MAG members, uh, early players, he as well as Christine Arida. I'm also giving our greetings to her. She's on the uh, uh, participants today. Uh, Charles Chaban is the chair of the Arab Multi-Stakeholder Program Advisory Committee that uh, uh, manifests the bottom-up nature of our Arab IGF. Charles, I would like to give you the floor. Thank you, Ayman, and thank you very much. And we cannot welcome hear you, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Can you hear me, please? Yeah. We still cannot hear you. Again, try. I, I'm unmuted. But we we can hear you. We're yeah. hearing you, Charles. We're hearing you. Uh, OK. Maybe uh, Ayman, uh, your hub, maybe there is something. Well, thank you for uh, Ayman and thank you everyone and welcome everybody to this uh, open forum. Uh, in fact, I will speak only for a couple of minutes, to be honest, just to, to build on what you started, Ayman, please, which is mainly to thank uh, the Arab IGF uh, umbrella organizations, uh, United Nations, ESCO, of course, and the League of Arab States who started this almost 10 years now and to be able to do uh, as the rest of the world. And as you mentioned, we were instrumental and followed the global in general regarding the internet governance. Uh, in fact, special thanks to Christine, as you mentioned, and the NTRA in general, who were our secretariat since we started to, and they had a wonderful and big role in that. Uh, so in, in my intervention, I want just to mention to the people, because I noticed there are many uh, from our region and besides people from uh, the world in general, to talk uh, about uh, only introduction about this year, how it happened that uh, the internet governance uh, will continue at the sixth internet Arab Internet Governance Forum. Uh, again, I have to thank again ESPRA because they included it within the digital cooperation event that will start next week. So, uh, and uh, another special thanks. In fact, I will only talk about thanks, I will read I will leave the, the, the substance maybe to my colleagues to talk more about it, because I have to be very frank. As you mentioned, I'm intellectual property and I couldn't take any copyright of this year event because it was led by a subcommittee of the AMPAC and with some additional few experts from outside. And it was led and co-chaired by our colleague here who is with us, Mr. Kosai Shati, and um, uh, another colleague, Hanan, I don't think she's with us today, but uh, I really thank to this small uh, committee who worked on this year. And um, we wanted to talk maybe more about uh, what they did, but uh, I think this will be covered by the second segment. So no need, I think, to say uh, twice about it. So I will just leave it that I will, I'm here. I will be all this session here ready to answer any question related to the impact in general or in, in, in about any other thing. I'm just a small, 
fast message for everyone attending us that please check next year when next week sorry next week uh, the arab digital uh, cooperation event that is led by esqua so uh, hopefully we will have more people joining from the global internet uh, bodies too and multi-stakeholder in general thank you very much uh, shukran nashar uh, thank you shar and uh, and many other language thank you now let's move to kosai kosai as introduced by uh, shar is actually uh, the chair or co-chair of the special task force uh, that was uh, uh, composed uh, by the AMPAC, by the Arab Multistakeholder Advisory Committee, for uh, expediting and accelerating fast track uh, progression of the program in a very, very uh, remarkable four or five months uh, period. Uh, Kosai uh, is also the chair of the first AMAC uh, in its first year in 2012. Uh, so, Kosai, would you like to give us your views on? Uh, since, uh, I mean, we started the Arab IGF and now uh, the IGF uh, is in the 16th year, uh, we see different, uh, let us say, metamorphosis or different uh, shape of the IGF issues at the global world. Uh, some kind of uh, themes uh, and regimes are emerging. How can you describe your views now of the status of uh, the global internet governance ecosystem and how do you see the uh, most important topics uh, from your point of view uh, as the co-chair of uh, special task force this year kosai the floor is yours thank you dear ayman and i am humbled by my dear colleague charles and how he uh, uh, on his compliment to our, our work uh, Really, as the nature of many things, it evolves with time. We develop a better understanding. We understand more the details and that underlies under each theme or issue or topic. Uh, with time, we 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 can uh, uh, identify priorities and what we want or what is the next steps or what is needed, so uh, uh, whether it is globally or regionally or on a national uh, level. In the uh, Arab world, we took our time to develop our understanding of internet governance. And it took time for us to uh, uh, absorb these issues and the conduct and to, and, and, and to adopt, uh, let's say, a climate of a policy dialogue on these issues that is non-binding, putting all the stakeholders together. So and if, uh, eventually the Arab IGF became such a unique event that is an independent platform for all of us to talk openly about the uh, issues related to internet in the Arab world. Moving from there, we look for the evolution of the global IGF. Uh, we look forward to see the IGF Plus and the Leadership Committee, as we are hearing right now, to emerge and take a leading role uh, in, 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 in bringing the uh, Internet Governance Forum, uh, whether globally, regionally, or nationally, into current issues and uh, 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 drive the way uh, toward uh, the future. One of, uh, one of the most important uh, aspects for us, for example, in the Arab world is digital economy and, the, uh, and its impact, especially with the coronavirus and the COVID-19 situation, where we are working uh, remotely, learning remotely, uh, doing uh, many of our tasks remotely. Uh, linking this to digital transformation and the impact of digital transformation. There are many into the economic and social uh, impacts and, uh, and effects that will take place on generations to come in the Arab world when it comes to these matters. Uh, before, we looked at many issues as silos, for example, data privacy, cybersecurity, uh, content, and so on. now we are linking these issues more together because we are more mature in understanding these issues and what underlies under each. So today we cannot speak about cybersecurity without 
linking it to data privacy, without linking it to building the trust in uh, a transaction, and 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 the way how we conduct digital economy, and, and how, how, for example, our activities, whether it is commerce services or uh, issues uh, and matters related to digital economy. Um, moving this to specifically toward the Arab world, there is an importance of creating an ecosystem for the digital economy and have a tool or an, a mean of measurement and to see how much it is contributing to our GDPs and what opportunities it is creating uh, to countries or to the region in the Arab world, whether to the youth or to all segments of ages. And more importantly, the role of global companies, global internet companies. Now, there is a, a, a major is, uh, issue is coming, uh, and that is the taxation or, uh, of, of these companies where they, uh, in the 15% taxation, especially that it is looked on under the G20 group. So where the country, where this company or where this global company is operating in, under which jurisdiction or sovereignty, where it will be taxed and, Today we're talking about the percentage, and a 15% has been uh, spoken out loudly on this. So, in a nutshell, I'm sorry for being long in my intervention. Uh, this is what comes through uh, when we talk about the issues of internet governance and coming to the future. Thank you, dear Ayman. Thank you. Thank you, dear Osai. Uh, uh, thank you, Osai. Now, uh, with that, uh, let us say, uh, panoramic walk through uh, the, the issues at the global level. And uh, we, that what we reflected actually in our uh, Arab IGF next week, the Arab IGF would really uh, show how uh, we view all these uh, issues from an uh, Arab perspective that will take place over two weeks, starting uh, next Monday, the end of the week after. So uh, that uh, really makes me ask another question from another end. I mean, from now the standpoint of Poland, from that perspective, who is now on the ground, and we arrived from yesterday to uh, day before to Poland, and uh, not only during the opening session, but even in the corridors and uh, here and there, he has felt some kind, of course, of pressing uh, issues or topics of overarching importance uh, uh, that uh, the IGF uh, 2021 uh, is sending signals around. So, Ibar, if uh, you can unmute yourself and tell us that uh, by kind of perspective from within IGF Poland, and if possible from participants who are around you who would like to make such intervention on their sense and feel and sentiment about what is the IGF in Poland focusing on today. What is the take home message that we can get from the ground, from the floor in Poland? Iber. Thank you, Ayman. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, very quickly, sorry. Uh, okay, so that's good, we can be interactive. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I will, I will uh, provide my own insight about what has been said during today opening ceremony and even more important yesterday at the day zero, uh, the, first, the first panel which was about the global recovery. Uh, very important speeches were given and uh, not only speeches, but uh, sometimes they were very compact. The, the, um, the, the, the very short speech by the Secretary General today, it was very dense and uh, carried very strong message about the importance of the internet, uh, which was displayed uh, during the last, the last year uh, and, and, and its role into supporting uh, uh, millions and hundreds of millions of people living, dry, uh, conducting their lives, socializing uh, uh, during the pandemic. And he immediately highlighted uh, uh, the, the shortcomings and um, well, the dark, he, he used the term the dark side of the internet. And immediately 
in a nutshell, he immediately went uh, through the description of what he hopes to do during the future period. He, he gave a vision of uh, globally connected with, with everyone and safe and open internet. Uh, and he emphasized that, uh, uh, that the report which of the Secretary General, which was delivered, uh, uh, I, I think, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, invited and, and, and called for a summit uh, uh, of the future to agree on a global digital compact. He used this term exactly, uh, the global digital compact, uh, with the purpose, with several purpose, uh, uh, mainly uh, uh, talked about uh, the safety of the internet, about uh, uh, the rights of people to have control on their data, uh, uh, about the about the security of the internet, and about um, very and, and about the, the need to connect everyone and not leave anyone behind. The same message was delivered yesterday by uh, uh, by the secretary of the ITU and by the under secretary of the UN when he was talking about how great uh, the global cooperation was in face of the pandemic and that how many countries supported each other in the, in the effort to vaccination. And they made the analogy that they need to be a similar effort to bring everyone to the internet and joining it. So these are uh, the, the, mo the strongest signals that first of all, global cooperation is needed, not a single country, not a single region, not a single stakeholder can do this on his own. Everyone must cooperate. The secretary general stated clearly that he is concerned about cooperation between three stake, three main stakeholders, governments, uh, private sector and civil society to work together to fulfill these requirements for a safe and, uh, and uh, fully connected internet during the next years. And again, he mentioned this, this hope that there will be a call for a, a global, uh, global digital compact. Uh, I will ask the floor here if anyone would like, uh, after your permission, I Ayman, I will ask the floor here with yeah, the colleagues if I'm anyone not. would like would like to make a short comment on yes. this. Yes, a couple of minutes uh, uh, intervention would be highly appreciated. If you have one uh, from the floor, please introduce yourself and give us your views on what uh, seems to be the most and overarching issues of IGF uh, uh, this year. Mr. Youssef Torman, please. Yes, thank you. Actually, maybe I, I, I need to highlight the, and thank ESQUA and uh, for leading the, for the issue in, uh, of IGF in, uh, in the Arab region and also for including the academia as, a, as one of the multi-stakeholder uh, group and so on. So from this point, I want to highlight that the, for the rest of the world, the importance of NREN National Research and Education Networks to be to take their stake and to, to do their role because we are part of the internet governance as we uh, work uh, for internet, uh, for research and education. Uh, in addition to that, there are very uh, highly priorities for, for, from the United Nations like the achieving the SDGs, which cannot be done without science, without cooperation. In addition to that, the UNESCO has recently announced the open science uh, uh, recommendations that uh, every country, every state has to adapt and to be part of the open science, uh, to make science available, not only for research and education com communities, but for the entire community. So from this point, I want to, to invite and to highlight the, uh, uh, the role of Indians and also the role of research and education uh, communities to contribute to the inter internet governance, because I, I see that uh, academia is not really involved and uh, I, I can see that in the opening and so on. So this is this is the first point. The second point is also related to the priorities uh, like uh, climate, for example. Like climate now is uh, has been mentioned yesterday in one of the activities which can be also addressed uh, through uh, these, these, uh, uh, these uh, infrastructure and so on. So I do not want to regret this, and maybe I can talk about this tomorrow in my in the session that I will be speaking tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, my good friend. Uh, so, so I can think that, uh, that uh, you're, you're, uh, you have a concern that uh, is academia one of the three layers that uh, as mentioned today, as uh, earmarked as the champions of the digital compact or the digital future. 
And I, and I think uh, uh, that is uh, an important uh, remark uh, to be taken. So, uh, Ibe, do you have any other interventions from the floor? Well, it doesn't seem that there is uh, another intervention. Yes, please, please. Please introduce thank, yourself. Thank you very much. No, I am uh, Mohammed Mnif, CEO of uh, Tunisian Internet Agency. And uh, I would like just uh, to highlight uh, some, uh, some uh, thematic or some problematic. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, 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 we talk about, uh, about uh, uh, internet of things, about uh, smart cities, about digitalization, about uh, health, about uh, education, e-learning, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we talk about uh, 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 many, many other uh, uh, 4G, 4G, 4G uh, for uh, broadband, uh, fixed broad, broadband and, uh, and uh, mobile broadband. Uh, uh, but uh, the operators of, uh, of our countries have many challenges, many in, 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 in fact, they have uh, many challenges, and I hope that in uh, IGF, Arab IGF, we put uh, some recommendation to help uh, the, our operators to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to invest, to invest uh, in infrastructure, uh, for example, in, uh, in fast link, in the optic fiber, and uh, they, they need, and they have, and they have to invest big amount, big amount, in 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 this side, and uh, and they have to uh, to uh, to do facing uh, some tax and uh, some uh, uh, taxes and uh, licenses uh, costs etc. to to our government, and in the other hand, uh, the the revenue is decreases is 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 strongly decreases because uh, the usage and uh, the 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 people's you you uh, use uh, uh, some uh, gafa application like uh, viber like uh, facebook like messenger like etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh, and so they uh, they in 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 one side they, the the revenue decreases and the other side they 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 should to to invest a big amount to to uh, to uh, ensure uh, many uh, many uh, uh, good uh, uh, good infrastructure. Jesus, that's that's that that the, the first question. Uh, the the second question, if uh, we talk about five uh, uh, G and uh, and the speed, uh, Muhammad, right? if we, yes. yes. Uh, uh, عايزين تقرا 10 ثواني اذا اذنت لي تقول لنا انت ماذا لمست اليوم في الافتتاح؟ اهم موضوع النهارده يعني تطرق الى ذهنك انه موضوع محل الاهميه عالميا. هل شعرت ان هو البرود باند؟ I'm asking about what Mr. Muhammad has detected as the top most issue raised in the arena today. So was it broad band or was it as Mr. Ibad said, كانت مثلا عن موضوعات خاصه بمستقبل العالم في الانترنت. هل كان هذا الموضوع الذي يهمك؟ Was it this? Okay. Okay, هذا الموضوع أول. الموضوع الثاني I, I, I don't know why uh, our countries in the ranking يعني ال, يعني التصنيف في الدول العربية فيما يخص في مجال ال IPv6 we are, we, are, we are not in the good ranking in good rates because IPv6 is, is more than necessary actually if we talk about 5G if, the, if we talk about small, small cities and many things to connect and many people to connect to internet and, and so on. Uh, okay. Just uh, we 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 hope that it will be strong recommendation to to allow our countries to to do the translation to IPv, IPv6. Exactly. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So that uh, is very obvious. You are uh, uh, keen on the issues related to the infrastructure, the protocols, the IPv6 dissemination in the region. 
I invite you to attend next week the Arab IGF for that purpose because we are going to discuss this from an Arab perspective in details. About, uh, may, may I have may I add one very quick comment, please? Yes, quick. Well, yesterday, the Secretary General of the ITU uh, uh, um, talked about the new, uh, new release of, uh, of ITU statistics. And I have the opportunity to have a quick look at it and, and that about the situation of the Arab region. Uh, uh, we, and I think this is something which we'll need to look deeper in, in the next few days and weeks, that uh, there looks to be an, a huge increase in the use of, uh, of, the, in, in, of the internet bandwidth in the Arab region. For once, we went higher than some other, uh, some other groups, but uh, it looks like, unfortunately, very probably, this increase is, has been uneven. Like the uh, global digital uh, recovery that was mentioned yesterday by the Under Secretary, that the world is recovering from the pandemic, but the recovery is uneven. What we need to take care of is that the Arab region is picking up in the ranking of the internet and the statistics, but we need to have, not to, to, to forget anyone aside. Uh, uh, we will talk about this later, but I wanted to stress this point, uh, as, as this point that, for the future. I'm happy that you touched on that because uh, exactly uh, one hour ago, I was trying to find the new release of the statistics. So that is important and will contribute to our understanding of our status and, and our uh, latest status of the life. Now I would like to move to the second segment of uh, today's uh, open forum. My colleague Mirna will uh, take us more into a deep dive into the uh, plans for next week and how uh, and what are the main themes and issues we are focusing on. Uh, Mirna, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Ayman. Thank you, Iba. Uh, thank you, colleagues, for being with us actually in this uh, very important uh, forum. Um, uh, our presence in the global forum actually is uh, very critical and essential for uh, our digital cooperation. In this segment, we will be uh, uh, speaking about uh, selected, uh, actually, initiatives, regional initiatives uh, to. Uh, to highlight how we are recovering also at the regional level from this pandemic and for, from this uh, and the surviving this and, uh, uh, and leaving the new normal actually with this uh, under the framework of these uh, regional, uh, regional uh, initiatives. Uh, for the as first speaker in this segment, I would like to welcome Ms. Fatna Farisi. Uh, Fatna would like to speak in Arabic. I would uh, actually uh, uh, ask her in English, but uh, she would be replying in Arabic. Fatna is a member of the ANPAC, and uh, she played a critical role throughout the years in the Arab IJF. Fatna, it would be very appreciated if you could brief us on this forum. What are the most important developments in the work of the Arab Internet Governance Forum, its process, objective, linkages with the global IGF, and so on? And especially in the light, in light of the corona pandemic, can you give us an overview on the process uh, of the preparation for this year annual forum, the Arab IGF 6? Fatna, the floor is yours, and you have maximum five minutes if possible. Shukran, Mirna, Okay, okay, shukran. أول شيء أود أن أعبر عن سروري لتواجد اليوم معكم وأيضا سروري لأني موجودة في الأرب أي جي إف وفخور أيضا أنني عملت في هذا الحقل. الأرب أي جي أف هو أسس عام 2012 على غرار ال على غرار المنتدى العربي لحوكمة الإنترنت الذي أنشأته القمة العالمية حول مجتمع المعلومات في تونس عام 2005 الكل بيعرف كده 
هذا الأخير قد حقق نجاحا كبيرا جدا وهذا النجاح كان أيضا في الاجتماع الأول الذي أقيم في أثينا فبدأت مظلة 2006 بأثينا وقد وقد قامت مظلة المظلتين اللي هي الإسكوا وجامعة الدول العربية حاولت أن تؤسس لهذا المنتدى على غرار هذا المنتدى العالمي وبذلك وبذلك فأقيم أول منتدى أول منتدى عربي بالكويت سنة 2012 وبعدين في الجزائر بعدين في بيروت مصر إلى إلى غيرك ما هي أهداف أهم أهداف المنتدى العربي لحوض الإنترنت أهم الأهداف المساهمة في تطوير مجالات في وجهات النور العربي إلى المستوى العالمي ودعم الدور العربي في ضوء في وضع السياسات الدولية العامة لحوكمة الإنترنت. هذا فيما يخص بعض الأهداف التي لم تكن يعني لم اختصرتها في هذه النقط الأساسية. ما هو ما صار يعني كيف يمكن لإعداد بروسيس إعداد المنتدى العربي لحوكمة الإنترنت هو المسار بسيط جدا أولا إنشاء اللجنة الاستشارية المتعددة الأطراف المنتدى إعداد المشاورات المفتوحة تحديد شعار والمحاور ومواضيع وبرامج الاجتماع السنوي والإعداد اختيار الجهة المضيفة وأخيرا الإعداد اللوجستي والتنظيمي بالنسبة لهذه السنة بهذه بالنسبة لهذه السنة فكانت هي سنة فهي كانت كانت سنة ممكن يعني هي سبيش مختلفة جدا لماذا مختلفة لأن فيها الكوفيد أولا وكان لم يكن ممكنا الاجتماع إلا من خلال من خلال الاجتماعات الافتراضية تماشيا مع الظروف الدولية كما أن لم تكن هناك تشكيل لجنة الاستشارية بل تم تشكيل مجموعة عمل مصخرة كمكون ضمن إطار اللجنة الاستشارية والتنسيق التام مع رئيس اللجنة ونائبه وذلك للعمل على الإعدادات بشكل مكتف لتحضير المقترح هذا هذا الحل كان حلا مؤقتا لانه ليس الانسب على اساس ان منظمه المظله لاحقا وبعد انتهاء الاجتماع السادس ستقوم بما يلزم من اجل فتح الباب لتلقي الترشيحات لعضويه اللجنه ومن تقييم طلبات وتسميه لجنه جديده. إذا أقوم بشرح بالنسبة لهذه السنة فهناك كان فريق عمل مصغر يتكون من تسعة أعضاء من تسعة خبراء من الدول العربية نعم وقد قامت هذه اللجنة المصغرة بتسعة اجتماعات عمل عن بعد دامت كل واحدة أزيد من ساعة ونصف بداية من 24 يونيو إلى 22 نوفمبر يعني عمل الفريق بأزيد من 117 ساعة فقط قام من خلالها بتحديد مواضيع النسخة السادسة مع توصيف دقيق الجلسات مع اقتراح متحدثين حسب المعايير التي وضعتها اللجنة المختصة شكرا جزيلا لك فاتنا أريد أن أعطي بعض the, the, the 
actually the presentation of Ms. Fatna. Ms. Fatna overviewed about the, the Arab IGF process uh, since its launch actually in uh, 2012, uh, in line with the global IGF as a multi-stakeholder platform, uh, having, um, uh, uh, having uh, Arab multi-stakeholder also uh, advisory group, working on its program, annual program, and uh, so on. For this year, it was very special because of the pandemic. And uh, among the AMAG members, uh, uh, we selected actually nine members in addition to other experts from the region in order to work intensively uh, to prepare for the program of this year uh, event. That will be actually next, uh, next week. Now, actually, with, uh, within the same context, I would like, would like to move and welcome Dr. Hussein Badran, who is um, a digital transformation and innovation consultant in Badran Digital Consulting in Canada. But he is also one of the main pillar and uh, um, a very active member in uh, in, from the start of actually of the Arab IGF and currently he is an active impact member and he worked also as a member of this uh, uh, dedicated uh, special task force that was uh, that was the form this year for to prepare for this upcoming annual meeting. Dr. Badran, based on your participation in this uh, year STF or special task force, could you please present us the main priority areas as it was identified for this year annual meeting? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madame Erna, for this um, uh, kind, uh, kind introduction. Um, thank you for for Esquire for leading this uh, big creation and organization of this open forum, which I think excellent opportunity to share the priorities of the of the Arab region with a wider wider audience. <clears throat> Um, uh, it's, uh, just to correct my, my work title is I'm a director with the Internet Society, director of Internet Growth and Trust uh, with the Internet Society, ISOC. Um, yes, we have the, the task force, as was described by my, my colleague, uh, Dr. Fatna, um, put together, uh, identified four, four critical areas that, to, that translated into uh, main or plenary sessions that I will describe shortly. <clears throat> um, the first, first session uh, is, uh, deals with meaningful access and inclusion. Um, um, and it, 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 it uh, attract, um, addresses key, uh, key, uh, specific key areas. One of them, what, of course, is access and connectivity, but more importantly, universal access and how to bridge the digital divide. As we have heard um, in the many uh, interventions so far, with the, with the pandemic situation, it became very apparent um, globally that there is a digital, uh, again, a strong digital divide between those who have access to the internet and those who do not have access to the internet. And access here can be translated not only in terms of connectivity, but also in terms of meaningful access. And that's something that this session will try to, to describe. Uh, and how to overcome this digital divide that, that has presented itself very strongly during the pandemic. On the other hand, the uh, digital equality, particularly on inclusion of, of women in um, um, meaningful access to the internet, this will also be a pillar of this discussion, as well as ac accessibility requirements for um, uh, what special requirements uh, for, for people with disabilities to be, make, make use and full use of, of the internet. Um, the other aspect is internet access and, um, and resiliency of digital infrastructure. Resiliency is a key um, issue that has uh, become much, much more relevant uh, during, during the pandemic with the growth of number of users, growth of access to on online services, um, to conferencing, to meetings, e-health services, and, and e-commerce applications. Uh, so our resilience here is becoming a key priority for uh, many, many um, uh, governments and, and stakeholders. Uh, also, the um, uh, digital financial services will be discussed, uh, and also um, in terms of financing and pricing and um, um, cost barriers of, of these services offered by by the internet architecture and national, national architectures. So this is summary of this first session dealing with meaningful access and inclusion. The second session deals with legal policy and regulatory framework. So really it is something that is quite critical for in the uh, globally, but more importantly in the Arab, in the Arab world. It, it will discuss the legal framework of, uh, for the protection of private user information and regulations to access, um, how to access this, this, uh, this information. In addition, collaboration between private and public sectors 
uh, need, needs to be highlighted in building regulations for consumer protection to identify it's not a responsibility of the government only, but also a participation and collaboration with the civil society, private sector. And, uh, for the sake of the time remaining, actually, for the other speakers and uh, topics we need to cover during this session, if, if, and it would be I appreciated if you can summarize actually the, 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 the content of each session. Okay. And we would like to invite everybody to attend this these plenary sessions next week. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for the note. So uh, within within this uh, this legal framework, one fi final point is the taxation of e-commerce and, and the services offered by global platforms. Third session deals with digital economy and digital transformation, particularly digital identity and fintech, and the key instruments for digital transformation. The, the fourth uh, the um, fourth session deals with a different different angle, basically the socio and the human uh, human angle of accessing uh, the internet and making use of of the internet. Uh, issues of uh, youth raising awareness about the uh, misinformation, disinformation during COVID-19, uh, issues with internet addiction, um, mental health issues triggered by excessive use of social media. So we're dealing with access, legal, legal framework, digital transformation, digital economy, and then the human and social impact uh, and aspects of accessing the internet. Thank so you. So actually, much. we are covering in these uh, uh, four main planning sessions all the thematic we need to discuss as priority areas for the region and their implication on the uh, socio-economic development uh, and the sustainable development. Thank you so much, Dr. Badran, for this uh, presentation. I would love to actually to move now for another, uh, actually, uh, uh, just to highlight also digital cooperation, but at local level. And uh, I would like to welcome Ms. Zena Boharab, uh, who is uh, the head of international cooperation at Ogero Telecom Lebanon, but uh, she is the secretariat of the Lebanese IGF. This is a national uh, uh, forum that was launched in uh, 2016. Um, uh, under the framework of digital cooperation, uh, Zena, uh, how do you uh, actually um, describe uh, the role of the Lebanese IGF and how was uh, the meeting this year, and what are the main uh, key messages from uh, the annual uh, meeting? The floor is yours. Thank you, Mirna. Uh, good evening, every, everybody. Uh, actually, the Lebanese IGF uh, this year was uh, held on uh, November 23 and 24, and the last session is happening. Actually, is the last session started five minutes ago. So uh, the forum uh, was uh, held under the overarching uh, theme, digital transformation for resilience. And we insisted on having the resilience due to the multi problems that we are facing uh, in Lebanon. Uh, so uh, the issues, uh, uh, I need to mention here also that uh, uh, the forum was held in a, in a hybrid uh, format. So the speakers and the Lebanese uh, mag were invited uh, to uh, to the host uh, venue at Ogero, Ogero, which is the continuous supporter of the Lebanese uh, IGF, and other participants uh, joined uh, online. We had four main sessions and three uh, community workshop workshops. The main sessions were decided based on the priorities ident identified by the Lebanese MAG and through a public consultation with the Lebanese IG community. Many issues uh, were uh, highlighted to mention the free flow of information in times of nationwide crisis, driving digital access and inclusion in Lebanon, the digital transformation challenges and the way forward, in addition to the last session happening now, which is the governance and security of data. So to be very brief, I will share with you the main, uh, the main messages that uh, uh, we, we want to uh, raise to the decision makers in Lebanon and also to the media in order to get some help in uh, spreading the word about uh, what the IG community in Lebanon uh, uh, set as priorities and uh, and defined as uh, actions to be done by by the Lebanese uh, government. So uh, in Lebanon we have a law called uh, the right to access to information. 
So this law, we, uh, we at the Lebanese the IGF, uh, we, re we call to activate it. And uh, at the same time, the law on, on the protection of uh, whistleblowers and the necessity of forming the Anti-Corruption Commission to monitor the proper implementation of the law. Uh, we had the... Uh, uh, what were the main key messages, Zena, from this year uh, forum? And especially uh, in relation with the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, the... the the, the whole situation in Lebanon, maybe? Well, we, uh, we uh, certainly agreed all together that cooperation is needed among all stakeholders to, uh, to uh, sort out the, the issues that we are facing in Lebanon and to resolve uh, our uh, problems. Uh, there is a need, for example, uh, to, uh, to encourage uh, youth to get involved in the IG process. Uh, we have to uh, also uh, uh, to highlight the issue of involving people with disabilities in any discussion or design of a policy or program on electronic services for the digital transformation. Uh, we need a clear action plan because we lack this plan for digital transformation uh, in Lebanon in order to make the best of use of the internet uh, and technology. That's in brief, uh, the main uh, messages. Thank you so much, Zena, for this uh, overview about the Lebanese IGF and the key messages and its process actually. Uh, and thank you uh, specifically because you could join us, Yanni, although you are sick. So thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I would like actually now to move to, to our uh, to our last uh, intervention in this uh, in this uh, panel, uh, which would uh, we will uh, discover together another initiative that it's, it's uh, it was launched by ESQUA uh, since 2018, which is the Digital Development Track Initiative, and it covers the national and the regional. Uh, digital development uh, uh, process. Uh, this also contributes to the digital uh, cooperation at national and regional uh, level. So I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Mansour Farah, who is international expert in technology for development. Uh, uh, your experience in digital development and monitoring the national and regional progress in implementing the global agendas such as WSIS uh, outcomes and other is very long, Dr. Mansour, and it goes back to many years. So as one of the main player uh, in the digital development track at national and regional level launched by ESPO, as I mentioned a few years ago, how do you describe the role of the, these two tracks, national and regional digital development as main contributor uh, to the digital cooperation framework we are hoping to achieve and uh, to have good uh, uh, good results in it. Dr. Mansour. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, actually, the, uh, the NDDR, or the National Digital Development Review, were introduced by ESQUA uh, in 2018. And uh, the decision was taken then to go ahead with a series of such uh, reports uh, that will be done on the national level. And then they we combined uh, at the regional level in what is it called the Arab Digital Development Review which comes out every two to three years. Uh, this tool um, is important. It was found that it was very important for um, digital uh, cooperation. And uh, uh, it was structured around the WISIS action lines as well as the sustainable, the 17 goals of the sustainable development agenda 2030. Um, 
So uh, the first session of these reports were uh, launched, uh, achieved in 2019, and now we are working on the 2021-22 uh, uh, session. Um, these, uh, these reports were based on a uh, guiding template that was designed by ESQUA to, uh, to make all reports similar in order to be able to combine them into one regional report. Uh, this uh, guiding template, uh, as I said, covers the needs of the uh, WISIS as well as the FPGs and um, uh, has been clustered, uh, has been divided into five clusters that cover all these requirements. Um, the most important uh, point is that these um, these documents or these exercises should um, point to existing gaps in the uh, transformation policies and strategies in the region, in the Arab region, and um, facilitate the development of national digital agendas, as well as uh, the Arab digital agenda that uh, the League of Arab States and ESCOA are working on. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Farah. So uh, this track contribute a lot in the digital cooperation by highlighting the gaps and building on that to build the national agendas as well as contributing to the unified Arab ICT uh, strategies also as well with other partners, League of Arab States and other uh, uh, institutions are working on. Now I would like to leave uh, the floor to uh, my colleague Ayman to close the session before uh, the technology uh, closing okay. it automatically. Before closing, I would like to get the, the gallery mode to take a, a group picture. Please, uh, anyone who is pausing this video, please open the video channel. We will take uh, a quick group video uh, based thought. And if we have time, we can take further questions from the floor in case they don't shut us down. So now uh, everyone uh, opens the camera. That's uh, our team here for the gallery mode. And we take this um, memorable moment of our first encounter in a hybrid mode and our way to physical inshallah next year. Thank you so much. And uh, I would like to seize this chance to also uh, thank and greet all my colleagues that I uh, used to see them virtually for the last uh, year and a half. But it's always good. Faisal and Fatma, Hussein, uh, Adil, and uh, I see Fadi Salem also. I see, I've seen Hanan, which may have played a big role in where we stand today at the Arab IGF uh, since a long time. And uh, we have seen Shafi, Shaya also. And, and these are some of the names, Mr. Bahad Hassamuna, and uh, of course, Christine in the beginning. I don't think you need uh, uh, to wait more, unless Mr. Ibad says there is pressing questions from the floor in Poland, and now we are not cut yet. So what do you think, Ibad? Any, any questions from the floor? Uh, I don't see any questions from so far. Yes, last word for uh, by by Mr. Youssef, please. Yes. Hi, here I am. Yeah, I, I want to invite you to the session that I will be speaking tomorrow. Uh, I sent that to the all uh, Arab IGF lists so, uh, email about the session. So you are invited. You will be supporting us, and also uh, I would like to hear your comments after your participation. Thank you very much. All right now, the last thing I would like to before you leave to look at the chat, and we are going to put uh, again. Uh, the link to the Arab IGF that is not being uh, convened separately. It, Mr. Uh, uh, Laid, hello. Uh, let me uh, no. floor after I finish the message. This is not going to be an Arab IGF six only, but it is going to be augmented virtually, not the reality, 
with the Arab voices uh, uh, and also Arab Government Council. And uh, for the first time ever, uh, a UN Group and Information Society global meeting of the UN Group and Information Society as part of our Arab uh, and International Digital Operation and Development Forum in, in its inaugural edition next Monday, 13 until Thursday, 23rd. So for two weeks, almost 40 sessions, we are going to run concurrently Arab IJF 6, Arab Voices 3, Arab Government 9, plus the first ever Congress meeting outside of uh, Geneva uh, to be convened as such. I'd like also to draw the attention that the first day on Monday will be a youth track for the first time in the Arab IJF uh, uh, journey. We have youth track. It's very exciting for the youth. Please to promote it. Please promote it to the youth community, IGF community, as well as the ICT4D and WISIS community. We look forward to having you all uh, register in this meeting. It's going to be by registration and uh, to visit our site, bcdf-2021.unesco.org. And with this, I wish you a pleasant evening in Poland in the rest of the world. Goodbye, and see you tomorrow in the session of Mr. Yusuf and other sessions by the Arabs in Poland. And next week, inshallah, Monday morning and uh, at 10 a.m. Beirut time, look at the future of jobs, future of work, for use, followed by access to finance for use, followed by a primer of internet governance forum for newcomers. And in Tuesday, the inaugural high level sessions by all heads of the UN organizations. And inshallah, all the best for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ibad. Thank you, Mirna. Thank you, all the panelists. Thank and you. Join us. Thank you. Best of the best. Goodbye, all. Goodbye. Goodbye.